In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly install concrete S-shaped tiles. Now, before you actually start installing tiles, the first step and I think the more difficult step is to actually mark out the lines of where you're gonna be installing the tiles. We mark chalk lines perpendicularly across the roof and what that does is allow us to have nice, clean, straight lines when installing tile and have a uniform pattern. Now, the first thing is going to be marking the first row of tiles. I wanna show you these grooves right here in the tile itself. And these grooves are made to have the bird stop the tile riser sit in these. So when we're installing this, these grooves fit into that metal right there. What that does is lock this in to make sure it doesn't move and keep this tile straight. Each tile profile is a little bit different. So depending on the tile that you're installing, the height and the width of the tile is gonna be a little bit different. What I like to do, you can measure it out or you can just install one tile, see where it lands and then measure it from the eave to the height. So right here we have 16 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark one 16 inch here, and 16 inches on the other side, and mark this chalk line all the way across. In this instance, we already have that installed. So we're good. The second row of tiles also needs to be marked off. And what we like to do is generally mark out our entire roof prior to installing tiles, as opposed to doing one row at a time. I think it just makes it a lot faster, it's a lot easier to measure out. These tiles are meant to be overlapped usually anywhere between three to four inches. For this layout right here, we've chosen three and a half. Now again, you've gotta take your roof size into consideration. If you have a big, real big field, you don't wanna have a small tile all the way at the end. So you might wanna to choose to do a four inch overlap or a three inch overlap. You have some room to play there. Depending on the type of tile, usually, you can do anywhere between two to four, two to five even overlap. Again, right here, we're doing three and a half inch overlap. And being that our tiles are 17 inches, if I'm marking a three and a half inch overlap, that means between the first row of tiles and the second, I need 13 and a half inches, which is currently what I have. That's what I've marked out. And what I would do on a, on a real roof is go out and continue marking up my roof field, 13 and a half inches, mark out my entire roof, then start installing. Once you have it marked out and you're ready to go, installing tiles is pretty simple, just like installing any other clay tile or flat tile. You're just gonna put it in place, make sure that it's locked into the tile riser and make sure you've got it lined up with your chalk line. Now, in order to ensure that the tile doesn't start straight, yeah, I'm gonna exaggerate it right here. Like I, I can bend it and it's still lining up with the, the, the chalk line. I don't wanna eyeball with one tile. What we wanna do is install three tiles. So essentially what we're doing here is using these three tiles to make sure that we're going, I guess we're squared off with our chalk line. Uh, Cause with one tile you can kind of move and bend with three tiles you're stuck, so once you have it in the right place, there's no way around it. We've got our, essentially our baseline settled right now. Going past these, it makes it just a lot easier. Once we have everything set up, you're just again popping it in place and nailing it down. Most tiles have different holes and different patterns in them. Depending on your wind, rating in the area of the wind zone. Sometimes we install two, sometimes we install up to three nails. Generally, we're installing one or two nails. Usually the third nail is not necessary. However, some areas with high wind rating, what the manufacturer recommends is installing three nails on the first two or three rows. So just make sure to take your local codes into account. The eaves and the first few rows of tiles tend to lift up more. Also, the idea is that if a tile on midfield slips, it's not as dangerous as a tile at the eave. If it slips, it's gonna fall off the roof and possibly hurt someone. So some manufacturers require the first two or three rows to be installed with more nails. However, again, the manufacturer is not as important as your specific area and the winds in your area. Like in our area, we have like Chatsworth, which gets super strong winds. So in those areas, we always install three nails, the first three tiles. Now we have our tiles pre-cut here and I want to show you kind of what the idea is behind it. Uh, so we've cut it at an angle to fit 
this hip right here. Now, being that we cut this top off, we essentially cut off our nailing zone. So with a grinder, what we've done is marked out a slit with a grinder. This allows us to place a nail right here. You can also use a concrete drill. So really, whichever one works better for you. Grinders are easier because generally you're cutting the tile with a grinder, so then you can just make a notch right afterwards with that grinder. Similarly, we've got this tile that's cut. You can see over here we decided to use a drill instead of a grinder, so both of them work. Now generally when installing tiles, you're going to want to have different size nails with you. We have both a 5 inch nail that we use and a 2.5 inch nail. And the idea is if you're nailing at the low points right here, where the tile curves down, you can use that 2.5 inch nail or 3 inch nail and get enough grab in your sheeting. If you're nailing off these high points right here, you've got to go through this empty space. So you want to use a 5 inch or 4.5 inch nail to make sure that you're going past through your sheeting. Generally, the rule of thumb is if you have a half inch sheeting, either plywood or OSB, you want to have one inch penetration, so you're passing through your sheeting at least half an inch. Of course, make sure that if you're at your under eaves, like these areas right here, and it's not a closed soffit, meaning that you're looking down to the tile, make sure that you use the right nails and the right pattern so you don't puncture all the way through and ruin your under eaves. That's pretty much it, guys. Installing these is fairly simple. Again, I think the harder part is picking the correct pattern, then starting it off. Once you have it started, you're ready to go. And I guess while we're here, I'll show you the second row of tiles. Again, we've got our chalk line marked out here. And the nice thing about these S tiles, S concrete tiles, is the profile already guides us on where we have to install it so that you're not figuring out your pattern. Just go ahead and install it on top nail it now over here you also want to use the rule of having three tiles next to each other again the whole purpose behind that is to ensure that your tile is lined this way because the difference between this and this is half inch on the top but it's hard to catch here at the bottom but once you've installed three tiles it's a lot easier to tell the difference so again we're putting our three tiles making sure we're aligned at the top then once we nail this that's set our pattern for the rest of the roof. So again, every row, just install your first three tiles. Prior to nailing it, align it, then you're good to go. Guys, thanks for watching. We have a lot of videos on our channel related to all types of roofing. And if I missed anything in this video, or if you have any comments on how you like to do it, let me know in the comments below.